Now, anyone remember Bebo? It was a social networking site that became big or biggish shortly before Facebook then took the world by storm. But it spent the past few years in the doldrums, and this week it was bought for a million dollars by the couple that originally created it and then sold it at the top of the market. So, what will become of it now, and what does it say about AOL, the company that paid $850 million for it but just couldn't make it work? Ever heard of a backronym? It's an acronym applied after the name's invention, which in Bebo's case stands for blog early, blog often. Only people haven't been blogging often enough. Step in this man, Michael Birch. With a million dollars to spare to buy the social media site and reinvent it, he should have a few ideas about that. After all, he and his wife originally created Bebo back in 2005, turning its popularity into a sale to media giant AOL for a whopping and you could argue unwise, $850 million in 2008. But AOL failed to build on Bebo's success. By the end of the decade, sites such as Facebook and Twitter were far ahead of the game. AOL sold Bebo for a fraction of what it had paid to a company that also failed to turn around its fortunes. Michael Birch has his work cut out if he's to make Bebo cool again. Taking to that other big social networking site to confirm his purchase, he mused, can we actually reinvent it? Who knows, but we'll be fun trying. Do you feel like you've got your baby back? I do in some respects. I actually didn't miss it when we first sold it, and I'm much happier getting it back than I realised I would be. Now we're back in control, it actually feels quite exciting. Is it a very different beast this time around? It's very different to when we sold it. I think the traffic is about one thousandth of what it was at the time that we sold it. Why did it go so badly wrong at AOL? It was, to be fair to them, it was kind of going badly wrong beforehand, which is, I guess, the reason we sold it. It was in a very competitive market. Facebook were really starting to beat us. The writing was on the wall, and although the traffic wasn't going down, we did everything we could to try and increase the traffic, and we failed for about six months. So you must have been laughing all the way to the bank. I mean, this has been called the worst deal in dot-com history. <laughs> I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing, but... Um, we were relieved all the way to the bank, I guess. Um, I don't think we were laughing. But do you think that they massively overpaid? They, they did, yeah. In, but hindsight's a wonderful thing. I think if you, if you cast your mind back to that period, we were the biggest Bible social network probably in the world at that time. So Facebook were too big to be bought. And MySpace had already been bought. And we, we were the next big opportunity. And, and could you take that and make it something really amazing. They hoped that they could. They, they kind of lost interest soon after they bought the business. Um, they decided themselves it was a mistake and they publicly said so. And, and then that obviously demotivated the staff at Bebo. So at that point, it really didn't have a chance. To did you feel angry that they didn't make that work? Or did you feel slightly guilty that you'd sold them a duff secondhand car? I would have loved to have seen it be successful. Like if you could have said, would you rather regret selling it because it became a success or would you rather be happy that you sold it at the right time? I'd have rather regretted selling it. I would rather it became really big and this thing that, that went on to greatness. Um, so given the choice, I would, I would choose that. But I was a little bit sorry that it didn't work out. Do you feel apologetic at all in terms of the investment that was made and the price that was paid and presumably the knock-on to the the pensions that have suffered as a result of <laughs> it's that. It's trying to make me feel guilty now. Uh, I hadn't done it until now. But no, not really. What does Bebo become now then? Because it's still a pretty crowded marketplace. It's, it's more crowded than ever. Um, we, we, we have this luxury of reinventing it to be whatever it, it makes sense to be. And what made sense eight years ago isn't what makes sense today. So the world has moved on a lot, and now it's a mobile world. So we're developing initially probably only for iPhone, then we'd roll out Android, and eventually maybe the web. But even the web is now questionable whether we'd do that. If it's going to be radical, why would I n not bother with Facebook or Twitter or the kind of market-dominant ones? I don't, I don't think it's a matter of not bothering with them. I, I, we're not trying to build a website where you think, oh, I'm going to cancel my Twitter, cancel my Facebook, and just use this new one. So what else does it have then? Now, it, things coexist. So it, I, I use Twitter and Facebook, and I'll probably continue to use them after we relaunch Bebo. They serve a purpose and a, a time and a place. We're just trying to take a blank sheet of paper and think, what can we build, what can we design that we think is going to be relevant today, that will stand the test of time, that isn't a fad, 
that serves some utility and purpose, but is also just fun and engaging for users to use. Do you think it's become harder for social media sites to retain their consumers' trust? Um, has it become harder? I think it's always been quite hard. And I, certainly when we were running Bebo, I spent most of my interviews talking about privacy concerns. Um, as long as you're aware of the, site, the sites that you use and how that information is shared, I feel comfortable using them and I do use them actively. Um, I think that the difficulty is sometimes the smoke and mirrors of not really understanding the consequences of taking a certain action. And we certainly speak to our children about they use social media sites about what they should be using and how they should be thinking about it. So I think it's more about education than necessarily a threat from this sort of beast of the internet. Will you seek to make Bebo profitable? Um, it's the last thing on my mind right now. Um, we're not in any hurry to make it profitable. Um, obviously we can't run a business forever as a, a charity because it's not a charity. So it does have to eventually make a profit, but our, our aim is to build something that people love. And if we can succeed in that, we know we'll have a successful business. Michael Birch talking to me a little bit earlier today from his home.